Joining me now is a UFC woman's contender who is, last I heard, is planning to drop down to the women's flyweight division, 125 pounds from, of course, 135. It is Valentina Bulichovchenko back on the show. Valentina, it's been a little bit. Uh, how are you? Thank you very much for the time. Uh, hello, Nick. I'm great. Thank you. Helping to my sister in her preparation for her next MMA fight, 22 of December in Dubai. And feeling great. Uh, training every day, as always. Excellent. Good to hear, and uh, thank you very much for the time, as I said again. Um, so, your name has been in the news quite a bit lately, um, a lot because of what happened this past weekend. Of course, uh, the UFC crowned the first UFC Women's Flyweight Champion, and even, you know, months before the the you know the champion was crowned, before the Ultimate Fighter 26, Nico Montano was crowned this past weekend with the win over Roxanne Modafferi, you have said you will be dropping down to 125, and considering you nearly beat Amanda Nunes for the Bantamweight title just in September, you're arguably the best 135-pounder. A lot of people are are anticipating you drop down to 125, of course. Um, as of right now, is the plan still to drop down to Flywood? Is that a given? Is that guaranteed? Yes, it's guaranteed 100%, and I'm already on my way. I'm making the diet for because I don't like this extremely cutting weight. Even I don't have to cut too much. My like walk weight is 135, and even this 10 pounds, I don't have to struggle uh, with this 10 pounds. And I I prefer like to drop uh, before 130, and from on the fight week to have only five pounds to cut. And this is my thought to feel uh, how to feel. Uh, better, more stronger, more powerful without having like this extra pressure about cutting weight. So even though you're out of camp right now, you don't have a fight scheduled right now, you are already preparing for the cut down to 125. You're already walking around a bit uh, a bit lighter. Is that true? Yes, it's true. I'm already preparing. I'm training every day. Like I said before, I'm, pre I'm helping to my sister in her preparation for her fight. And that's why I every time in the form, in the good form, and just in case to be ready for, for some kind of like uh, urgently occasion and um, just stay and do what, what I like and to be um, on like feeling great on the training every day. This is what I, I prefer to do each day. Specifically, what are you doing? Because it has been a while since you competed at 125. Your your entire UFC career in, in the octagon has been at bantamweight. Are you using a stricter diet? Are you, are you cutting out certain things? Are you doing more cardio? Um, specifically, you know, walk me through your routine, sort of on the path to 125 pounds. Yes, I just um, I do the same what I was doing, and I just cut a little bit sweet from my regular diet <laughs> this is I think more problem for me but um, it's temporary and uh, when I will will be like when I reach my goal to make this 130 and I will have the same way that I I was like eating every time but for now this is like actually only one thing that I cut it from my uh, normal diet would you like to use a UFC Performance Institute? I've heard many great things about it. I know, unfortunately, you don't live in Las Vegas, and, and for that reason, a lot of fighters can't use it. But is, is that something you would like to use? Is that something you've, you've wanted to use and you know plan to use? Oh, you know, like uh, in the last month, we spent in Las Vegas about three, four weeks, oh, and wow. every day we were training in the UFC Performance Institute, and exactly, it's a uh, like great place to train because um, you sadly they have everything what they need. They have their place where to train, cage, mat, ring, whatever, all conditions. Uh, so uh, if you have some injuries or whatever, you can fix it in there. Physi physiotherapy. Uh, so this is uh, this is what I was enjoying every day, and of course it's a very good place to uh, have in training camp and uh, just to be focused on the training and nothing more. Why are you? Why have you been in Las Vegas the past little while? Uh, we was traveling, and um, after the fight. Uh, my sister had her MMA fight in London in the end of September, and uh, when we both end with our fights, uh, we had uh, some kind of free time, and uh, me, my sister, and our coach, Pao Fedotov, we uh, decided to have this free time 
on travels because travels is our like uh, mm-hmm. uh, lifestyle to be every time moving and we just uh, took a car took our car and went to uh, Utah State to uh, Salt Lake City and we just drew to Las Vegas we, uh, we went to California and after Las Vegas we went back uh, through uh, Arizona we've been in Santa Fe then uh, to Texas El Paso San Antonio and uh, each this uh, like uh, each city on our way we were stopping we were training in some gyms well, of of the city, meeting different people, and meeting like um, uh, same same people who are doing the same stuff that we are, that like and love martial arts, and this is like a very great thing that you can travel, you can share your uh, experience, you can meet good uh, energy from the people who are who are you meeting, and this is what I prefer, and especially me and all my team, uh, we are prefer uh, to have this kind of um, our life, lifestyle moving every time and just live every day oh that that's quite the road trip you started uh, a fairly not not up north but you know midwest uh, i guess in utah and all the way down to the south that, that's crazy um i you de- yeah it seems like you definitely do travel quite a bit you know to, to what you're saying i know i think the last time we spoke you were actually on vacation in hawaii um, just before the title fight. So um, it, well, what about living in the United States? I know you, you still live in Peru right now, right? No, last uh, two years we are living in the uh, States and we are, okay. uh, because there is so many states, there is so many places to visit and it's each place is so different and I try to enjoy every day of our stay in and I like because we have all uh, all uh, facilities, all possibilities to train and to, uh, to do our job uh, in the best way that we can. Do you have a home base? Like, where where is your sort of main spot you live right now? Or do you just travel all the time? Uh, the, our base in Texas, but okay. I prefer not to sit too much in one place, and uh, we prefer to travel a lot. For example, for um, preparations for UFC 213 and 215, we spent almost all summer in Colorado and Denver, and Evergreen, it was very beautiful cities, and uh, I really enjoy this, uh, this summer in mountains. It's very beautiful there. Excellent. Well, the U- as I said off the top, the UFC Women's Flyweight title uh, was, of course, won by Nico Montano. She defeated Roxanne Motoferi by unanimous decision at the Ultimate Fighter 26 finale in Las Vegas. Um, did you watch the fight firstly? And if so, what were your thoughts on Montano's performance, um, again, winning the, the first uh, the Flyweight title? Yes, I saw the fight, and I think it was very interesting entertainment and beautiful fight between two uh, very high skills uh, level uh, opponents. And uh, it was like five rounds, five minutes, non-stop fighting. So not one girl, she didn't want to quit, and every time they was interchanging the strikes, the grapple, whatever they can do for win this belt they did it both and uh, it was really interesting to watch the fight and um, now finally we have this 125 flyweight division and um, i i think it's very great for you see to have more weight classes now we have four weight classes for females and um, just to focus on uh, to perform on every time better and better and i really very happy for uh this uh female mma that now we are like uh in very big and very high level do you think the ultimate fighter was a good way to crown the first flyweight champion or do you think they should have just brought in the two most notable fighters from outside of the organization and had them fight for the inaugural title do you think the you know the tournament format was was better than just bringing in two fighters uh, you know, it was good fight. It was good reality because it was uh, like girls who um, high, uh, who has high level MMA fight. So it's not only for now how I see it's not only for example striker against grappler or whatever something like this. We could see in all uh, reality all girls 
they are exactly MMA fighters because uh, MMA fighter is universal fighter. You have to uh, know how to strike, how to uh, do like uh, to kick, how to punch, how to wrestle, how to do uh, ground game. So everything in one. And I was very happy to see it, uh, that now this is uh, like more and more we can see not only one style, we now we are see all like unique style, MMA style. And there were a lot of upsets. Nico Montano, I don't know if you realize, but I think she was I, maybe the number 12 or number 14 seed. I know I, because Eubanks was, you know, they were either number 12 or number 14. And so a lot of people thought maybe Roxanne Motiferi would win the title, maybe maybe Barb Honchak, uh, maybe Deanna Bennett. Were you, you know, how crazy was it to you? Um, were you familiar with the fact that, you know, th- these were underdogs fighting? Nico Montano, anyways. Uh, you know, for me, it's um, I. I never think about this. Like, um, um, if someone underdog, why? Why do you think, for example, people think that um, she or he cannot win? No, I don't think that it's something um, that makes sense because this is a fight, and everything can happen, and it doesn't matter where are you now, you can perform you like very well, and every time we can see different fight with the same result. If, for example, one fighter go underdog and then she or he turn it uh, like upside down and um, we see the different result. And th- this is the fight. This is like, it's not a movie. It's real world, uh, real fight. And um, I think this is amazing about our sport. Do you like how the women's flyweight division is shaping up right now? Of course, it's still brand new and it's going to get better. Um, I, I know Dana White, even himself, the, the of course, the UFC president, said that he expected more fighters to drop down from 35 and move up from 115, but it probably will happen, you know, just over time. Um, but right now, do you like how the division is shaping up in, in, in its early stages? Of course, Montano is a champion. You have Roxanne Mataferi. You have Lauren Murphy, Barb Honchak. You have uh, Eubanks, who was supposed to fight for the title. There's a, there's a number of good fighters. Are, do you like how it's coming together? Uh, you know, it's exactly what I was saying. It will not stay like this for a long time. It just brand new. It just formed like recently. But uh, I see in maybe a few months from here, uh, a lot of fighters from 135 will go down to 125 and from 115 also will go up. And also we uh, cannot forget uh, about uh, very good uh, skills girls from outside of UC and I think it will it uh, this um, like weight class will fill in up with the uh, new fighters more and more and I see it look uh, right now I see it uh, unfinished I see it it will be bigger in the maybe next uh, few months that's why it's very difficult to say exactly right now about uh, 125 like a already formed division because uh, this is not yet so as far as where you fit in, where where do you feel like you fit in? Because you're a top contender at bandweight. You haven't won a UFC fight at 125 pounds. I know some fighters did earlier uh, fights in the women's flyweight division. I know uh, Joanne Caldwood versus Valerie Letourneau, which was happened um, a, about a year ago, maybe maybe even more. And that was at 125. That was before the division was put together officially. Um, you are O and O at, at flyweight in the UFC. Do you think you could get it? You know, fight Montano in your first fight down. Do you think you know maybe you deserve a title shot? Maybe they want to give it to you, or or should you take one fight first? Uh, you know, my main goal every time it's like uh, till till now it's uh, fight for the belt and win the belt of UFC. But I know uh, that Nico Montagna, she got injured in the fight, and I don't know how long it will take to um, to her the recuperation. And uh, I'm a fighter. I don't like to be, like, long time without any fight because I think it's not good for, the, for a fighter. That's why I want just to fight. I want to fight, and uh, every time uh, we each fight... Um, like feeling me better and better and when times it's come like be ready every time that's that is like my philosophy every time i don't want to wait nothing i don't want to sit without fight for one year and just wait this opportunity no because uh, i will fight i will fight with uh, whoever they will put in front of me and uh, just keeping what i like like to do uh, more than else 
and uh, when time is ca- will come, it will come, and I don't want to wait. I'm interested to get your thoughts on on whether or not you think winning the title this early on, winning the flyweight title this early on, in in you know it, it only the the champion, the first champion was only crowned a few days ago, and so it, it's still not a super deep division. As you said, it's going to get better in the next year or two. What what are your thoughts on you know if you do end up fighting Montano say next year, um, whether you take one fight first or not, maybe you fight her for the title next year. Do you feel like it might not mean as much as say fight um, beating Nunes and getting the 135 pound title just because that division has been around for much longer? We've had many champions there: Ronda Rousey, Holly Holm, Misha Tate, and Amanda Nunes. Where here, Nico Montano. She was an underdog. She was four and two professionally going in. She was coming off a loss professionally, officially. Um, does winning the flyweight title, you know, it, early in its existence, mean as much as winning the the bandweight title t- now? Uh, you know, with Amanda, we still have unfinished uh, business, and uh, I know exactly this last fight she didn't won. And everybody know it. And uh, for now, my goal is to perform me in 125. And uh, I'm very glad that you see uh, decide to open 125 because um, I feel like um, even I was feeling me very good, very strong in 135, and I never had a problem to fight in this weight class. Uh, I just feel that um, to fight with same size opponent, I can show like. Uh, all best things that I have and uh, more skills that I have. But how I said, um, we still have unfinished business with Amanda. And, of course, in the future, I still plan to fight her again. And it's, it's on my mind. I never will, like, uh, leave this result of the fight like it was um, in the last fight. And maybe when you do fight Nunes again, as you say, you, you plan to in the future, maybe you'll be the flyweight champion, maybe she'll still be the bandweight title or champion, and it'll like, be a super fight of sorts. We never know. <laughs> this is like uh, every time what I, uh, what I, every time what I'm doing, it's doing what I like. And I love martial arts. I love to train to every time to feel me in good form, good shape, and with each training, with each fight to feel, to feel me like stronger and stronger. And um, do what I like. It's more uh, important for me. And um, just fight with everyone who uh, will on my way, will be on my way. As far as the significance, though, of the flyweight title, um, women's flyweight, you know, 125-pound title, because it's so new, that, you know, does winning it right now so early on, does that mean as much as winning bandweight? Like, is, is winning the flyweight title just as significant if you were to win the bandweight title? Uh, you know, it's uh, all the same, because uh, it doesn't matter if it's new or if it's old. Uh, the for example, of, of course, 125, it already has uh, history, but uh, when it was just formed and first fight, female fight was in 135, it uh, also was very new, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. And here, uh, for example, all girls from 125 and every uh, we, are, we are making this history, it will be uh, very important and very big in for for example in uh, in few few years from here but we will we are forming the history of this weight class of this weight division it's very important for every every weight class uh, is how i see it has the ufc told you that valentina we want you to fight nico montano as soon as possible when she is ready to go when when her injury is healed when she's recovered that's the fight we want to make have they said we know we want you to take to take a non-title fight first. Have they told you what they want for you? Uh, you know, this kind of, uh, like, uh, uh, business talk, I prefer to give to my team, to my manager, and me, myself, focus more on the training. But it's uh, it's past just a little bit, just so, how many days? Two days? Today's third day. I yep. think um, more exactly uh, like conversation we will receive in the, the future days. But for now, it's uh, it's past so small amount of time. And uh, of course, uh, next days it will be more um, concrete something uh, something from uh, both sides. 
Can you clear up what happened with Paige Van Sant? Because I know you, you went out and did an interview a while ago, about a month ago, saying you, you wanted to fight Paige Van Sant, and then you went out later and said uh, she does not want to fight you. So it doesn't look like the fight will happen. As of right now, is that is that still the case? Will that fight not happen? And what exactly did happen? So the, the um, what happened, and she put it on her um Twitter like she will fight for the title and uh, from my position if you are saying something you have to respond for your words and if you want a title you have to prove that you deserve the title and um, just to fight with the top level opponents from uh, this weight category and this is it is the best way how you can show that you deserve the title not only jump there and uh, for whatever reason uh say I'm here and I'm ready for the title fight. No, it's not it doesn't work like this. You have to prove that your skill it's very high level and you are deserve the title fight. This is like was my intention. If she wanted to fight for the title, she have to prove that she deserve it. And uh, for now I think um they schedule um, the fight with another opponent with different girl. So she will fight a different way, I will fight a different way. But um, she will not fight for the title before she proves that she is the one who deserves it. To sort of flip that, do you feel like you've done enough? Do you feel like you've proved that you are worthy to fight for the title? Uh, you know, it's like mm, the f- fighting and martial arts, for me, it's everything. And... Um, I don't have to prove for no one that I deserve. I will just fight with whoever they will put in front of me. I know exactly my skills. I'm 17-time World Muay Thai champion. I've been in martial arts since uh, five years old, old uh, like more than 25 years. So this is my life. Martial arts is my life. And this is what I love to do. And I cannot see me without martial arts. So uh, for me, just fight. Doesn't matter who, just fight. And my main goal is to be the champion of UFC. Interesting. Well, Valentina, thank you very much for the time. Uh, best of luck to you in the new weight class and with the weight cut and, and of course, a uh, few down the road getting a flyaway title shot. Best of luck to you. Um, thank you very much for the time. Before I let you go, let my audience know where they can find you on social media and if there's anybody you'd like to thank or you have a shout out to, the floor is yours. Uh, my social media on Twitter and Instagram, it's Bullet Valentina, and um, everyone can find me there. And uh, just want to appreciate um, the, um, your call, and it was my pleasure to speak today with you, and just wishing you a very good day and having a great time. And I will keep going with my preparation and everything to make me feel uh, strong in new for me, uh, weight class 125.